How are you? Bien día, bien día. Oh my God, amigo. Alright, <laughs> these guys. The guy that taxi was was trying to get my attention. I don't know why. What is going on, everyone? David here. So I am in beautiful Cartagena, Colombia, and actually, you know what? I stayed in this Airbnb about a month ago. Very, very, very nice apartment complex. Morano, Morano Elite. So uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about the five things that you should always consider prior to international travel. And I've been traveling now for about 12 years internationally. Uh, prior to that, it was just within the US. I went to Puerto Rico once and that was my biggest, I mean, it's still in the US, but that was the first time where I kind of traveled a little outside of my comfort zone. But primarily in the past, I was just traveling in the US. Then 12 years ago, I came out to Colombia, actually came out to this very place, Cartagena, Colombia. That was the first time outside of the country. And so I've learned a few things along the way when it comes to how to prepare for a trip, international trip. So the first thing, when you book your flight, always get travel insurance. Now you don't necessarily have to get it through the when you're booking your airfare, but it's the easiest to get it when you're booking your airfare because when you book your airfare, when you come to that last screen, it's going to ask you about travel insurance. And you can get travel insurance if you want from them. Now, the reason that I always tell people to get travel insurance, it's not really for the baggage fees and all that. I'm not baggage fees, but if they lose your luggage, then you, you're covered. It's not really for that. It's mainly for the medical. And so you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you get injured. Say you're walking down the street and you step in a hole and you break your ankle or you, you, you have some type of severe injury and you have to go to the hospital. What you don't want is you don't want to go to the hospital and then because out of pocket, you're gonna to have to pay cash, cash or credit card, whatever you have. So you don't want to be in that situation where you pay and then, I mean, the money's gone. So if you have travel insurance, most of them will cover emergency medical. So you'll be able to go, you might have to pay out of pocket initially, but then you'll get reimbursed from your, from the insurance. And so I always recommend that. And then another thing, let's say you get in a situation that's even worse than just falling in a hole, but now you're incapacitated or now you need, you need emergency treatment and you can't get that in the US. And so now they need to medevac you out to the closest place where they can provide that service. And it might be in the US because the US realistically, if you go to Florida, it's about two and a half hours from Cartagena. So in that situation, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars that you will have to pay in order to be medevac out to another country. And so that's where travel insurance plays a huge role because a lot of the plans will offer an emergency evacuation, whether it be for health reasons, or it could also be for a situation where you have civil unrest, you have protesting that's gotten out of hand and now they need to get people out. That's another reason why you could be uh, medevaced out of a place. So that's the first. So there's one thing that I forgot to mention about travel insurance. So you can get it when you're booking your flight, but you can also go online and I'm not being sponsored by this website or anything, but this is the one that I use. It's travelinsurance.com. So if you go over there, what you do is you just put in the time that you're going to be staying, approximately how much you pay for your ticket, 
and then it will give you a variety of different options. So you're going to have all the different insurance companies that will show you what they're they're charging. For me, it for for about a month or actually for about 2 months, about a month and 3 weeks, I paid about $100. And that covers me for medical emergencies and things like that. And then they'll also show you everything else that they cover you on. So you'll, you'll have an idea when it comes to if you get your luggage uh, stolen or lost, or even if you have other things with you and it gets lost and stolen, it's not at the airport or anything like that, you still could be covered. So you just go down the list. I generally will go down and look. My main concern is the medical emergency insurance, as well as if I needed to be medevac out, I want to know how much that would uh, how much they're going to cover for that so i want it to be at least a hundred thousand when it comes to medevacing me out uh, the more the better and so just just things like that you need to, to take into consideration and it doesn't really cost that much more you could pay seventy dollars and you'll get a certain benefits and then you pay a hundred dollars and you get like twice the amount of, of benefits as, as far as getting you medevac out and medical emergency and all that kind of stuff. And so I just wanted to mention that because I didn't say that in the video. Yes, when you're booking your airfare, they're going to ask you if you want travel insurance, but it's only going to be one company. If you want to have a variety, you want to see a variety of different companies, go to travelinsurance.com or go to a website similar to that, and then they will give you a breakdown and they'll have all the different companies. One other thing that you can do, even before booking your flight, you can go to travelinsurance.com and just put in your, what your anticipation is, how much you anticipate spending, what days you anticipate going, and then you'll be able to see the insurance that's available. And so you don't have to book your ticket and then see, you can do it ahead of time and so you'll have a good idea. But I highly recommend, highly suggest getting travel insurance anytime you're traveling outside of the US. Now the second thing that I encourage you, if you're traveling anywhere internationally, sign up for the step program step with the the state department and the reason why you want to do that is because you can let them know your itinerary where you're traveling to how long you're going to be here all of that and there are two good things about that one is if anything goes down like i was talking about civil unrest things like that they will be able to provide you with information as well as they'll be able to provide you with a ticket home if you really needed it and they can give you all that information you might have to pay for a flight but they will at least provide you with the information a good example is during the pandemic people and I know I had some friends out in Colombia that were stuck here they couldn't fly out there were no flights going going to the US but they had these humanitarian flights that would go like once a month. And so they would be able to give you information on stuff like that. So sign up for the STEP program. Uh, also, if you were to get in trouble and things like that, they would at least know that you're here. Uh, if you get things stolen, something gets stolen, or God forbid, you pass away, they'll have your documentation, they'll have your information. You'll also have an emergency contact. When you sign up for the STEP program, you put in your emergency contacts. And so they can contact someone in the U.S. to let them know the situation. So STEP program, highly, highly recommended. Okay, now let's talk about hotels versus Airbnb. This is my practice. This is how I go about it. If I am only staying in a country for, let's say, seven days or less, then a hotel makes sense. If I'm staying in a place over a week so over seven days that's when i'm going to start looking at airbnbs the main reason for that is airbnbs you have a kitchen you you can wash your clothes and in most cases you obviously you need to do the research so if an airbnb has a washer dryer then you can use the washer dryer and all that stuff so that's what i do that's my practice another thing if i'm going to a city for the very very first time let's say i'm, I'm planning to stay there for a month but i've never been there before then I'm either looking for an Airbnb that is close to major hotels or I'm going to stay in a major hotel for a week and then get an Airbnb later. The reason why I do this is because if it's a new area that I've never traveled to before, I'm not really going to know the lay of the land. I'm not going to know where 
what's a good area to stay in, what's a you know not not so good area to stay in. And so if I'm booking an Airbnb, I don't really know what what to look for. However, hotels, major hotel brands, they're always in nice nice areas. You're not going to find a Hyatt Regency or a, you know a Marriott property in a real bad neighborhood. It's just not going to be something that you'll you'll find. And so because of that, if you find these these big hotel chains, for the most part, they're going to be in a nice area. And so. That's why when I'm looking at Airbnbs, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> How are you? Bien día, bien día. Oh my, amigo. All right, <laughs> these guys, the guy in the taxi was, was trying to get my attention. I don't know why, but anyway. So if you are in a situation where you don't know, I'm gonna actually let this this big truck go by because you're not going to be able to hear me. So if you are in a situation where you're looking for an Airbnb and you don't really know the area, look for major hotels. If you can find a major hotel in that area, you're probably in a, in a good place. And so, and then you also, when it comes to Airbnb, you can also look at the reviews. The reviews are going to show you a lot as well. And so that's something to consider. So I do those things look at the reviews on Airbnb, and then I'll look at the hotel. If the hotels are nearby, then I know it's a, it's a pretty good area to stay in. And then you can also do other research online, TripAdvisor, different things like that, and you could get some information from them. And so that's what I do when it comes to hotels versus Airbnbs. Another thing that I strongly encourage you to do is to make sure you bring a carbon monoxide detector. And I will show you guys, I'll have a link in the, in the comment section pinned at the very top so you guys can see the one that I use. But I highly recommend doing that because when you travel, if you're in a hotel, major chain hotel, you're not gonna have to worry about it. But if you're staying in Airbnbs, like I like to, then you are going to have to worry about it in certain situations because you're going to find that the standard in the U.S. is not the standard all over the world and you're going to find places that do not have a carbon monoxide detector inside of the the apartment or inside of the even some of the hotels so I always bring my own and I mean it they're, they're very small you don't have to it doesn't take up much room in your, in your luggage but it's worth it because I've been in situations where it just seems a little weird. I might feel like I'm getting a little sick and I don't know why. And I just started really bringing the carbon monoxide detectors as of a couple of years ago. So prior to that, I wasn't. And so you just don't wanna be in a situation where you get sick because that can ruin your whole trip or worst case scenario, uh, you end up passing away which it's happened before where a tourist passes away and they don't really know why and then they do some investigating and then they find out it was carbon monoxide poisoning so just something to think about it costs you what 20 30 bucks to buy carbon monoxide detector and just carry it with you wherever you go anytime you check into a hotel or check into usually hotels you're not going to have that issue but if you're checking into an Airbnb, you can go ahead and just plug it in and you'll have that. Uh, some of them run, you have to plug in, some of them are just battery operated. So as long as you have a good battery, you're not going to have a problem with that. Okay, so the last recommendation, and it's getting hot out here. <laughs> it's early in the morning. It's probably it's 7.30 in the morning and it's already like 87, 88 degrees and very, very humid. Uh, so if you guys see me sweating, that's why. <laughs> um, the last last thing I want to talk about now, this is probably, this is just as important as having travel insurance. Down, go, go to Google, get the Google app for Maps and Google Translate. And download the 
Google Translate language. So in this case, I'm in Colombia, Spanish. I do speak some Spanish, but it's good to download the Translate. Okay, Google Translate for Spanish, download it. That way, if I'm offline, which you probably will be, as soon as you come into a country, you might be offline, you might need to go get a SIM card or something, then you can always use the Google Translate because you've downloaded it onto your phone. So now it's offline and you don't have to worry about it. If you don't have internet service, you can still use it. So that's, that's one thing to download. The second thing to download, Google Maps. Now, a lot of people don't know about this, but if you're traveling to an area, let's say you're traveling to a city and you don't have internet service, well, you can't navigate. You can't use the navigator to find your way. But Google Maps will allow you to download a certain area. So a good example is I'm in the Boca Grande area right now of Cartagena. I can download a map that will encompass the Boca Grande area. That way, if I don't have internet, it doesn't matter. I can still use the navigation. And I use it a lot when I'm walking to different places. I might not know exactly where I'm going. And so I just use the Google Maps. You have the walking feature and it'll take you, you know, step by step how to get there. So something worth considering. Uh, I think it's very, very important. It takes you not even 10 minutes to do to download Google Translate and download Google Map. And then also, this is a bonus here. If you're traveling a lot, consider getting Google Fi, a Google Fi phone. That's what I use. I've been using this Google Fi phone for, since 2016. So what, six, seven years. And it's very convenient because one, I can pause it, so I can pause it, I think, up to up to three months. So if I don't want, if I'm, let's say I'm back in the U.S., I don't need this additional phone, I can pause it. So that's a good, good feature. But the best feature is you don't have to switch out SIM cards. It's an international plan that you're paying for. I pay about, it's about $80 a month is what I'm paying. And it's, I don't have to worry about anything. Once I get into another country, it will automatically connect to the cell sites in the area and I don't have to get any a different SIM card or anything like that. And so Google Fi, I've been using them. I almost switched, completely switched over to Google Fi and got rid of my other plan. But uh, just for right now, I, I, I'm going to just keep, I have two phones basically. So I have a Google Fi phone and then I have a regular regular service provider but uh, Google Fi is very very affordable and it works well I haven't had any issues with it at all the only thing with uh, Google Fi if you're outside of the country for more than three months then you have to return to the US in order to keep the same plan and so what they'll do is they'll shut you down and so that's something worth considering so if you're one of the people who like to travel and be outside of the country for five six months then Google Fi is not going to be good for you unless you fly back in to the US even just for a day just so Google Fi can hit the the cell sites in the US then you're 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 gonna have a problem with that if you if you don't do it that way so just something worth worth noting but those are the five things those are the five things that I make sure that I do uh, prior to travel internationally and hopefully this helps you guys out if you guys have things that you do that i didn't mention let me know in the comments below and we'll talk about that in another video but uh if you guys have any other questions about anything else also let me know down below if you like this video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe for more and i'll talk to you in the next one yeah bye yeah 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 hey, coming in coming in yeah Flex. I just wanna win, yeah LABB, who we running with, yeah 2 2 three, three, I'm on 10 again, yeah State your name, big been dope on flame I just switched the lanes, damn he did it again I just flipped